thing that strikes me most looking back at this is that it was the maddest thing he could ever have proposed to do. Nobody alive had made a manuscript book. Nobody knew how to make a manuscript book. So we were making it all up as we were going along. And I remember the morning we decided to make the book and we discovered that the only source of vellum in Ireland had just gone out of business. And then Joe Katz, um, who had been working for something, so he rebuilt the company. And we read in the paper that morning that they were cutting down the elms at Tour Ballylee. And I got on to, you know the way you just do mad things without thinking about it? Rang Quill, they got a mobile number for the guy in charge of the chainsaw gang down in Gert. Rang him up and she said, you put aside one of those trees for me? I will, of course. No idea who I was. And that's this. This is a, an elm planted by Yates at Tour Valley League. So all of these things, right from the very start, so forms of magic accumulated around the book. And here's a piece of magic. Here comes one of the earliest contributors to the book, President Higgins. What did we know 22 years ago when he was putting his poem in the book that he'd come back to celebrate the book having found the final goal as President of Ireland? Now, one of the things the book taught us is that nobody knows what the future holds. This is the best thing about this book. It's a message sent with complete confidence into the future. The design life of a well-preserved manuscript on vellum is a minimum of a thousand years. And what we said to the contributors was, you don't have to write something new for it. You will have to make a new image, obviously, to the artist. But you're sending a message a thousand years into the future to say who we were in these days, what we believed in, what mattered to us. And it's kind of a sobering thought to realise that scholars of the future, school children of the future, will be shown this book in whatever building succeeds, the building we're in now. And they'll be able to look back in time and make contact with the living. Because the great power of art and the great power of poetry is it is always living, encapsulates the lives we have now, and it gathers them between its protective arms, and it carries them out into the unknowable future. And that's a nice thought.